tomorrow we all await to hear what the speaker's uh, position or ruling will be regarding the call or the petition to him to declare uh, some seats vacant. Still on this subject, though, let's engage the thoughts of former Speaker of Parliament himself, uh, Professor Aaron Michael Kue, who was the Speaker of the Seventh Parliament. It was during his leadership uh, of, of the House that the Formina constituency seat was declared vacant. So he's joined us on phone to at least pick his thoughts on the current debate in the House of Parliament. Um, Honorable uh, Professor Mike Okwe, good evening and thank you for joining us on News 360. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Great. Uh, you declared the Formena constituency seat vacant when the MPP drew your attention to the fact that one of their own had decided to contest as an independent candidate. There is a similar development in Parliament where four MPs have decided to contest as independent candidates. It is only fair that based on your precedence, the current speaker should also declare those four seats vacant. You would agree, right? No, it's not that simple. In fact, in order to understand this matter clearly, you have to give it a purposive interpretation. And if you want to give it a purposive interpretation, then you must know, ask yourself, but where is this coming from at all in our, in our Constitution? It is coming from 1979 Constitution and 1969 Constitution. Why did it start at all? Because in the Nkrumah regime, there was this practice of carpet crossing. People moving for the political party that they belong to, upon inducement, upon fear, and so on and so forth. It was a tool used in breaking the opposition. Now, so in 1969, the Constitution famous wanted this not to happen again. Therefore, it's a protective measure. It is a shield for political parties so that their members in Parliament will not be induced or move out of their political party out of fear or whatever. Mm. It's all to the constitutional, 1969 Constitution making proceedings. You will find this there. If you understand then this is a tool in the hand of political parties to protect them, to protect them. And that is why when the Fomina case came, the first thing that I did when the political party the, that the member belonged to complained was to write to the Fomina uh, entry and ask him to explain and gave him seven days to do so. Mm. That was set on him. Oh, good. Then after that, he had an opportunity to defend himself. In fact, he said at that time he was not interested in any such thing. He was concentrating on his campaign. Okay. Fine. Having been given the opportunity, then the speech has to take a step. That step was to go by the Constitution. Mm. As the, the report has been made, and also the Constitution of the party that he subscribed to also said that if you campaign against the party, if you hold yourself against the party, if you contest your official candidate, then you forfeit your membership. So the cumulative effect of the MPP constitution, as they themselves said, signed by the Secretary General of the MPP, was a different matter so ever. Okay, now, so, so, so Prof, should it be our understanding that the current situation, from what you're saying, the current situation of these four members of parliament is totally different from the former situation? Is that the point you're putting across? I'm, I'm clearly drawing the, the difference. As of now, what is the political party which has complained? And as of now, where is the opportunity to give those people complain against a hearing? This one is like an adjudication against them. Mm. So you must give them a hearing. Where is the hearing? Okay. And that is what, uh, and you cannot really dismiss that person from parliament. You cannot take any step against him. You 
cannot take any punitive action against any human being in Ghana until you have applied the only Australian party rule, that is, give him a, or her a hearing. All right. There's no deal. All right. And that is, please, can I finish? I want to learn, because we need to understand the historicity and the implication of what is happening. And that is why, if you compare the present position, you will realize that nobody is being given an opportunity to defend himself or herself. Mm. But this is against that particular person. Now, if you make this a common general thing, that it becomes like a motion, uh, a motion in parliament, it will become a very dangerous uh, thing indeed. In fact, it will boomerang against mm. uh, the political party system. Why? Because you can imagine a situation where a party has a big majority in parliament. It can use this a way of destroying the opposition party. One, two, they will bring a complaint that there is some problem with that particular uh, political, uh, that particular MP. And if the speaker is inclined towards accepting it, then that person will be thrown out of parliament. It cannot happen like that. And that is what the difference is. The, the position and neos to the benefit of political parties. A okay. political party has complained. I don't know of any complaint formally mm. by the political party to which these members belong. And Prof. also, they need to have an opportunity to defend themselves. Prof, thank you. Those are two critical points you bring to the conversation. One, someone must make a complaint. And in the case of Formina, the MPP actually drew your one. attention. It is not someone. It is the, the party. party. The party, right. To, to but, which the party belongs, yes. Okay, but Prof, is it stated in law or is there any legal backing to that, that the speaker or the party must draw the speaker's attention to it before Article 97.1G is triggered? It is not a matter of drawing any attention. The political party involved, to whom that provision and neos, must make a complaint. Okay. The, the, the speaker will give that member opportunity to defend himself or herself. Right. The speaker will make an adjudication. This is not a motion to be debated upon politically and to be used as a political tool against members of parliament. This and finally, what, 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 what if it is an independent candidate not belonging to any political party? What happens in this instance? Because we know that the Formula MP, who is currently an independent candidate, wants to contest on the ticket of the NPP. So what, what, in your estimation, could happen here? That person is telling you that in future, with regards to the next uh, parliament, that will be the ninth parliament, I am going to run together with a particular political party. Who is complaining? But as for now, I'm an independent candidate. And I'll be an independent candidate until the expiration of the term of this particular parliament. After that, I'm going to be an, uh, 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 a member for the NPP if I win on their ticket. Who mm -hmm. is the complainant here? And that is why you must understand clearly what is this thing all about. This whole okay. provision, if you understand the politics of the First Republic, and the fact that this was put in to protect political parties and to prevent kicking out members of parliament by way of maneuvering and scheming, mm. then you appreciate this whole thing. Okay. Professor Aaron Michael Quay, thank you so much for uh, bringing some further perspective to this conversation. Certainly tomorrow is just a few hours away. We'll get to hear what the current Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, would say regarding the petition before him. This is still News 360 on TV3. On to some other stories now. And in a significant legal development, the National Democratic Congress parliamentary candidate for Amefi Central, Joanna Jan Kujo, has been disqualified from contesting in the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections.
This decision comes following an order for interlocutory injunction issued by the High Court in Second D. The Electoral Commission confirmed the disqualification in a letter addressed to Mrs. Kujo, referencing a lawsuit filed by Jedu Fimpon and four others against her, the NDC and the EC. The court's order prohibits Madame Kujo from presenting herself as the duly elected candidate and restricts the NDC and its affiliates from recognizing her as such. The EC emphasized that it is bound by the court order which has not been stayed or vacated as the political landscape shifts it remains to be seen how the ndc will respond to this setback and who will emerge as the candidate for the amifi central seat already the incumbent ndc mp for the area peter yao kwachaka is contesting as an independent candidate